Hey guys, Hikans here with a World of Warcraft video. This is my first gold guide and I'll be going over some of the ways I've been raking in millions of gold each month in Legion. And my hope is that some of you will be able to replicate some of the strategies that I discussed and make gold on your realm. Today is December 2nd, so this video should be relevant for Legion 7.1 content. I've broken this guide into three parts. First, I'll be briefly going over the ways I've made gold so far in Legion. Next, current gold making techniques that are working for me that you should consider. And lastly, my outlook on the future of gold making as well as token prices in 7.15 and future patches. I'll put links to the three parts in the description below so you guys can skip ahead if you want to. To start, I'm going to be going over what I've been doing the last couple months to make gold in Legion. This is Moolah, my bank ult that I rolled specifically for Legion. And as you can see from his stats, he's brought in over 6.1 million gold from auctions at an average rate of about 65k gold per day, and this equates to about 2 million gold per month. Before launch, I settled on leveling my mage first with enchanting and tailoring as his professions. I made it a point to be one of the first 110s on my server and to unlock all of my imbue silky patterns and enchanting recipes, and more importantly, to have my Bloodroom Forge up and running ASAP because I knew it would be extremely profitable. I took a small portion of the proceeds from selling BOEs and WAD to buy cloth and this allowed me to craft hundreds of both imbued silkweed bracers and a bloodroom and sell these for a hefty profit. For the first couple weeks both were selling consistently for between 7 and 20k. As more people have started to get forges and learn the recipes there was a significant dive in prices so I decided to find new sources of gold making which I'll cover in the next part of this video. So most of you are here for this part of the video. We're going to be discussing what the best ways to make gold are currently. So the first way to make gold that I'm going to be covering is through one of the gathering professions. To be perfectly honest, this is actually my least favorite method for making gold, but it has its merits, especially right now while the expansion is still relatively fresh. This method of gold making is relatively risk-free with the exception of prices being pretty volatile right now. It's also a relatively good way to make gold currently because there's high demand and so many people buying up the mats to level up professions, craft gear, and like. However, one of the pitfalls gathering and the reason why I choose to avoid it most of the time is that it's extremely time intensive. There are a lot of good farm spots for gathering, but even when I am farming these spots, I feel like it's a chore more than a game. If you choose to make gold via gathering, make sure you have the appropriate shoulder enchants for extra mats, and try to 3 star your recipe so you get the maximum yield and bloods. The bloods are both great for crafting and getting additional mats from the new trader that was added recently. The next method of making gold through professions I'll be going over is crafting. Everyone trying to make gold on the auction house should pay close attention to the price of base mats, but this is especially true with crafters. Uh, the best gold making is going to come from buying mats when their prices bottom out, taking those mats and crafting something of significantly greater value than flipping them on the auction house. Currently, I think there are a few crafting professions that are stronger for gold making than others, and these professions are enchanting, jewel crafting, and alchemy. People are buying both enchants and gems for new gear they're getting, and potions and flasks for mythic plus dungeons they're raiding. On top of that, mats like Chaos Crystal, Starlight Rose, and Ord prospect into gems take time to farm. I don't want to make this video too long and hit on every profession, so I'm just going to briefly talk about my druid who's an herbalist alchemist. I'm checking the prices of legion herbs, flasks, and finally obliterum to determine what is the most profitable way to make gold with his professions. The legion flasks each take 7 starlight rows and 10 of 2 additional herbs per craft. With the current price of herbs, it'll cost around 1k to 1.25k per craft, and the flasks are selling for about 750 to 950 gold each. What this means is that if you don't have the three star recipes on my realm and you're buying mats off the auction house, you're going to be crafting these potions and flasks at a loss. You're going to need to proc the three star recipes to make these profitable and even then you're only making at most a few hundred gold per flask. At this point in the expansion, if you're trying to make gold from crafting flasks or potions, you'll definitely need to have three starred your recipes. However, there is an opportunity to make gold just by farming herbs and selling these as mats. Crafting old world recipes and also selling the pets you get from the meats to pets transmutation recipe. You can craft one once per week and it drops one of nine pets, three of which are new to Legion and sell anywhere from 25 to 50k. Flipping BOEs is actually my favorite way to make gold and it's one of my main revenue streams currently. It can be very high risk but it has high reward and there's virtually no time required uh, so long as you have the gold capital to back it. My recommendation if you're new to flipping BOEs is to start small pick one or two BOEs to follow and flip. And on my realm I found that plate and leather seem to sell better than mail and cloth. Rings and necks, since everyone can use these, sell really well. 
Item slots where you get a higher boost to stats like chests and legs go really well as well. Uh, followed by all other slots and trinkets. Titan Forge and Sockets are the stats you want to be looking for in these items. If you can get both on an item, they can sell easily for over 100k, sometimes even 200k depending on the eye level of the Titan Forge. There are a couple ways you can make gold with this method. First, you can buy all the BOEs of one type and re-less them if you have enough gold to do this. Secondly, you can be selective and only buy the higher stat items after determining that they're undervalued. Lastly, you can farm them yourself if the gold investment is worth more to you than your time. Buying pets to flip is another great way to play the auction house. They're the only in-game item that allows you to play cross-realm price arbitrage. What this means is that if prices of a pet on one realm is significantly higher than on another, you just buy it on the lower price server and then create it and sell it on the higher price server. I hear a lot of people say they can't make gold on their servers selling pets because they're on like a medium or high pop with so many people farming pets and selling them. However, I think this actually puts you at an advantage. You can buy the pets where the prices are low, create it on an ult that you made on another realm and flip it for a huge margin. However, sometimes pets do take a long time to sell, so you should consider this more of a long-term strategy. But I've been able to successfully do this with TCG pets, just uh, finding them when they're low, like 20, 30k, and flipping them on my realm for, you know, anywhere from 40 to 90k for some pets. Um, keep in mind also that if you're farming gold to buy tokens to pay for the game, the prices of these tokens are the same across all the realms in the region. So you can just buy the tokens anywhere so long as you have the gold on that realm. And this is one of the advantages to this cross-realm pet selling strategy. This can be hit or miss simply based off RNG and can be kind of grindy. ICC farming is great with the release of the new rating with Leisha's achievement. Um, you can work on your legendary for the mount and toys. Most of these are BOE so you can sell them on the auction house. And pets off the Lich King sell for a ton right now. They seem to have a relatively low drop rate, but you can run it each week on all of your alts for a chance at the Dredge Ghoul and Wicked Soul. The Dredge Ghoul is actually a really good seller right now. Um, I've seen it anywhere from 70 to 120k on different realms that I play on. Lastly, a Blitterm Forge and crafting bracers can still be profitable. Uh, people still need their bracers for the quest, and people still need a Blitterm for upgrades through the crafted gear. Blizzard mentioned that they wanted crafted gear to stay relevant throughout Legion, and they're going to do this by increasing the number of times you can upgrade your crafted gear using a Blitterum. Just like they did in 7.1, in patch 7.1.5, the item level cap of crafted items will be increased by 10 item levels to 865, up from the current 855. Additionally, the artifact knowledge catch-up will encourage people to level up and gear alts. These newly leveled alts equipped in crafted items will also require more Blitterum than before if they want to cap out items. This should result in much more demand for Obliterum than now and higher prices, but it's actually pretty hard to say right now with the current markets being flooded with Obliterum and the prices being so low, whether or not it will significantly raise prices. Okay, lastly I'm going to be covering my outlook on future of gold making and token prices, and this is mostly relevant for people like me who farm gold to pay for tokens, and I follow the prices actually very closely since I have 4 accounts that I pay for with tokens. This is mostly regarding the recent 7.15 data mine. There's already been an apparent impact on token prices for people buying the rumor. Um, at least in the US, the prices have already gone up by about 10k. Prices on tokens will continue to incrementally go up. The effort to make gold should stay relatively unchanged, which means that you're going to need to exert more effort to pay attention to how you farm gold. You need to be more efficient, pretty much, since you're going to be required to farm more gold to buy these tokens. Even if the rumors and data mines prove false and you aren't able to convert tokens to Battle.net balance, I think the prices will still be near current levels since people who already purchased tokens can't sell them back and flood the market bringing the prices down. Big gold makers for me will continue to be BOEs and pets. I do some ore prospecting and crafting if I can get the raw match cheap, but I think BOEs and pets is where it's at right now. Speaking from experience flipping BOEs and Warlords of Draenor, I think flipping BOEs is going to be a good way to make gold even to the end of the expansion. My plan for the next couple of weeks is to have a more in-depth guide for each of the professions since I do have a bunch of ults leveled up and their professions almost at max. Please leave me any feedback or questions below and I'll do my best to respond to them. Please make sure to thumbs up this and subscribe if you found this video informative and you'd like to see more from me. Thanks for watching. Late.